and I'm starting the recording now. All right, um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about Active Classroom in Dallas ISD and how you guys can support your students. Um, hopefully, you know, you can get them access at home. If you don't, if your students don't have internet access at home, you can still print off packets from Active Classroom. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that as well uh, for students that don't have internet access so that they can be doing the same assignments that you are assigning out digitally. Um, so real quick, um, to get into Active Classroom, remember you can log in with Clever. Um, so you can either do that right from the homepage if you go to activeclassroom.com or if Dallas ISD, if you guys have a, a portal where you guys click on to go into Clever, or if you just go to clever.com, you'll find the Active Classroom icon. Um, we are adding fourth and fifth grade to the rostering to provide for you guys free for the rest of the school year, um, just to help you guys through this, this time. Um, but we've also added some things in here for free as well that's normally an upgrade, but we wanted to give you guys, uh, we were originally gonna present this to a group of teachers and have them look at it and evaluate it um, and then make a decision on whether you guys wanted to add it next year. But since we couldn't all get together and meet, those, all those meetings got canceled. We decided to just give it to all of you guys for free so you can play around with it and explore it um, for the rest of the school year and see what's in there. All right, so let's do a quick kind of go, go through a few things that I want to highlight. So you'll notice there are some icons here. This one is new, this maps icon. Uh, that is because it, it, we've now included the Nystrom world content. Um, so you had the atlases before, and I do want to highlight here for my Texas history teachers, we have the brand new atlas of Texas history. So um, if you teach Texas history, it's a great resource. Um, I'm so thrilled to actually have that now. Um, I've been begging for it for 11 years, 12 years, and they finally, um, but it was, yeah, we were owned previously by a different company and then Social Studies School Service bought us and I told them from the beginning, hey, this is what we need, and they delivered on it. And so super happy with that. I think you guys are gonna like it. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the maps right here. So this is one of the new features that's added in. It's kind of a free draw tool. So as it loads in here, it's going to come up and you've got this map of the world. You can drag it around. Um, you can add in different layers. There are different maps. So this is like an intermediate series. There's a couple of different ones in here. You've got political, physical, and then like your continents and oceans, land use, population density, precipitation, temperature, time zones, uh, wealth of countries, and outline maps. So those are in there, but you also have your secondary uh, maps, which have additional things like tectonic plates, climate, uh, growing season, land use, land cover, uh, a lot of different things here. But when you change between maps, you can add on a variety of different layers. So right here, this is where you can add layers in here. So if you want to add in your physical feature, you can do that. If you wanted to add in some political content, you can do that as well, and students will be able to do that also. Um, let's say you want to, I'm gonna take this to full screen here so you guys can, we can see it. Um, if you want to create a presentation, something that you are going to save, you click on this little button right here, gallery, and you click on new presentations. So this is where the kids can build and save something. So I'm just gonna title this one, Dallas Training and you can add a you know description to it or anything like that. Teachers can build these, students can build these. Um, there's a lot of really neat other features on here. You notice on the left-hand side, you can add multiple slides, so it doesn't have to stay on one and you just save your progress as you go. It does do some auto-saving, but um, just to make sure before you click off of it, I would always click that save button again. Uh, this is a new function on here too, where it's country information, so the kids can click on um, a country here like Venezuela, and it gives them some information. And then when they click here, this also takes them to the World Factbook, and it gives them more information on the country. So it's really a neat tool, a lot of really cool things that we've integrated into this. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, right here, that's where we're saving things. And so if you wanted to, if the student wants to build a presentation, they can add in different images, like maybe you're looking at economic industries, right? So maybe we've got fishing that takes place here, 
or maybe um, obviously the Middle East, we're gonna have some oil. So we've put some oil derricks all around here. Um, maybe you have some types of farming in different parts um, in different countries. You, know, you can put little farm equipment in there. Um, so there's different symbols like this, and this is for building like a really neat project, robust project. The students can drop in, if you grab this little push pin here, they can drop in images, they can drop in videos and text. So right here, you can give it a title. I'm gonna call this Libya. And um, did I spell that wrong? Libya, yeah, Libya. And they can type in information down here, you know, whatever they want. And then down here, they can actually add in a picture or a video. Um, they can just copy and paste, either upload something from their computer or do something like that and send that to you. So um, you can save your progress. I'm just gonna hit the save button here and I'm gonna close my presentation and I'm gonna go to my gallery. And so right here, the Dallas training, that one that we just made, I can share this right here with my teacher. And so when you click on that, you'll be able to share that with your students or the students back to the teacher. Um, so that's that's one of the new things, but there's a lot more to this. And so I'm going to hop out of here real quick. Um, other than rather than just kind of that that free drawing, um, you can also do things like um, go to full. Hop out real quick here. So back on the home page, I'm going to show you guys where there are some actual activities that are done for you so you don't have to create. But I just thought it's a great tool for um, geography and sixth grade, um, those two courses to be able to do that, those kind of presentation projects. But it's also great for world history and U.S. history because you have all of those world history and U.S. history maps in there that the kids can manipulate and add in content to. Now I'm gonna take you guys in to show you where some of that new content lives. All right, so when you log into Active Classroom and um, you wanna find resources, there are some curriculum maps down here, but if you want know what you're looking for and you're like, okay, I wanna find something on uh, Thomas Paine, we're looking at common sense, you could type in his name, Thomas Paine. You can search right here by standards. So this allows you to select your grade level, and then you select state content standards and it'll pull up all of your teaks right there. So let's do eighth grade real quick, state content, hit update. Um, I imagine you guys are on sectionalism right now or close to it. So if you wanted to find just the teaks on sectionalism, you could just type in the keyword sectionalism and it pulls up those teaks. So once you select the teak that you wanna find content on, you select it and down below, it pulls up all of the activities relating to that teak. See how it filtered it first. The first one was originally the Alamo and now it's changed out. And this one deals with Harriet Tubman and um, leaders of the Daring River Boat Raid. Um, so it has a couple of different readings in here. Then there are some Atlas activities. Um, and then you have some backwards planning PowerPoints, C3. So there's a lot of different types of activities. I really like these Colonial Williamsburg. Um, these ones are neat. They're short little videos you can assign out to your students. It has a brief introduction, just a two paragraph type of thing, a glossary. So all of the vocabulary words the students are going to encounter in these videos. There's a timeline and then there are three different videos right here. So you've got three videos with questions down below. Uh, when the students get it, this is what it'll look like. I'm going to change it to student view here. So the students will have boxes where they can type in their answers and it goes right to you. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, I did wanna focus on sharing some of the new content, but I did wanna show you how to search that real quickly. Um, some of you, a lot of you have already been to these trainings, so I'm not gonna really spend a ton of time on that, but we can do additional follow-ups later and I can definitely stay around and answer questions for you today. So um, I'm gonna go back here and instead of standard search, I'm just gonna go to a regular search and I wanna show you some of the great new content that's been added in with the Nystrom World Edition that we gave you guys. So over here, this is where you can search by subject, um, Texas history, you can pull up all the Texas history content there. Um, you can pull up any one of your subject areas right there. Once you have the subject selected, you can select your era and theme. Um, and then down here, these are the series titles. And this is my favorite place to live uh, when I'm in active classroom 
because each one of these, if you guys notice over here on the left-hand side of the screen, there's a little icon and then there's a grouping of words. So the icon tells you what type of activity this is and the grouping of words tells you what series. Now notice the title of that one, Acting History Plays. There are several of the Acting History Plays. If we scroll down, we can see we've got about 15 or 20 of these Acting History Plays. Actually, there's 18 of them. And they're all different content, so it's not just one thing. So this one has Richard Nixon, it has Reconstruction, it has Jolton Joe DiMaggio, um, the Great Depression, the Ghost Dance, Amelia Earhart, the Alamo, all of those things in there. So that is a collection. A series is a collection of similar activity types, but with different content. Um, so as we scroll down through, you'll see like African-American heroes of the Civil War. Those are readings that focus on um, African-American heroes that, that participated in the Civil War. Um, Atlas of U.S. History, Atlas of World History. I want to show you guys something with these here. So the Atlas of U.S. History and World History, they now have level one and level two activities. So when you find one, um, we're further along here, so I'm going to jump ahead maybe to this page. Uh, we're probably a little past that. I'm going to go ahead maybe to, yeah. So like you're getting to the Civil War um, right here, Slavery Divides a Nation. So you've got a level one activity, which is like a skill based. These ones are easily printable. Um, so right here, you can print all of these from this PDF creator right here, whereas the level two activities are a little bit more advanced. Um, the level two activities, the students are going to be doing some online manipulation. So right here, if your students do have access, this is a great tool. It has some a reading, it has a map, and then the students answer the questions digitally right here. But as of right now, these are not printable, the level two. The level ones are printable, but the level twos are not. Um, it does warn the students when they go on to the next question if they didn't answer it, like this. And so you'll see this one has multiple maps. They can enlarge the maps right here, and they can even use the little spyglass right here to look at details on the maps. So that's another tool that's built in. Um, you'll notice that the level of rigor increases as you go through the questions. By the time you get to this last one, this is more like star level type of question. They're given this reading passage. They're given two maps. They're having to look at the Compromise of 1850, the Dred Scott decision. And then they're having to answer this question over here and look at the rigor that um, this question you know, demands. Using the information from the passage and the maps, which of the following statements could make uh, could you make to support the idea that the Dred Scott decision made the Civil War inevitable? Select all that applies. So that's that high level thinking type of question. Um, all right, I wanted to jump back out of that and we'll come back here, going back to the series. And now let me point you to the newest ones that were added in. And I love these, these are so much fun. Um, kids really get into these, I'm gonna do, Let's do something for geography and world cultures here. So I'm going to pull up the mapping our world. Um, look at the way these units are organized. So this first unit starts off with a close reading exercise. Then there are multiple activities right here. And these are all focusing on global and world themes. And then it has quick writes. So these are writing prompts. Students are given short um, writing prompts that they have to answer or, you know, respond with a short essay. Uh, there are mapping quizzes. This is a true and false, pretty much straightforward true and false quiz or multiple choice. It does auto grade that for you. Um, and then it concludes with a research project. And so you don't have to do all of these. You can select just the ones you want to do. But I wanted to show you what was all included in that. And then notice it goes on to North America. And so we have some different topics here. It starts off with physical geography and then it goes into some of the like the cultural geography. Um, you get into population, and then you get into some more specifics like megalopolises, kind of like DFW, right? Um, and then you have major industries of Mexico, and then volcanoes in Middle America. So let me show you what one of these mapping activities looks like. Uh, these are completely interactive, and so I showed you guys kind of that free drawing mapping tool at the beginning that's on your homepage. But if you want something that's a little more structured, this is what it looks like here. So the instructions 
are right there and I just minimize those. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. Um, so this is what it should look like when the students have finished their project. So it should, they should have the plates labeled. They should have like where volcanoes are found, coffee, be uh, coffee beans, and then um, where some big volcanoes erupted and killed people. Um, so the instructions are all right here for your students. So what I really like about this is this is giving students meaningful mapping activities. I was really guilty of giving my students blank outline maps and telling them to color them and label the countries. Um, that doesn't necessarily accomplish the level of what you need from the teaks, right? It's more about how humans interact with that environment, how that environment has impacted civilization and culture, all of those things. And this does a great job of showing that. So they're going to learn first off about volcanoes and they're learning about um, the distribution of volcanoes and there's little embedded snippets in here. So this one here asks the students to click on that for a picture of Mount Hood, compare it with Mount Kilimanjaro, and then they're going to look at a ring of fire map. And so they're going to look at where the, the placement of all these different volcanoes exist and it's going to help them work through the activity. So as they read through, they're following these step-by-step -step instructions and it's telling them here, use the pencil tool, underline the label for Central America on your map. And all of these step-by-step -step instructions, it shows, it asks them to look at the Cocos plate, a close-up of the tectonic plates of Middle America. This is even a nice one that you could print out and, and give to your students for a PDF if you wanted to. Um, so they'll work through this here. They're learning about the process of subduction, more about the Cocos plates, the Caribbean Sea. And as they work through this, they start to learn a little bit more where they're marking volcano stamps. And so they're putting the volcanoes on there. They learn about the South American plate. They're gonna look at land cover map. And then they'll mark some of these here, the wave stamps to show tsunamis and things like that. Um, and as they, as when they finally work through this activity, after they've looked at the physical impact of the geography, they're gonna look about the human impact. So, um, you know, volcanoes cause great damage in middle America. So it talks about Mount Pele and Martinique. They killed more than 39,000 people. Um, so they have to place the stamp there. Then it talks more about populations being disrupted, 1995. And then it goes on to talk about my favorite subject, which is coffee and how because of those volcanoes, we have really enriched soil in middle America, which is why if you guys have ever had, um, you know, coffee from that region of Central America, some of the best coffee, I think, hands down. Um, anyways, sorry, that's just my little side note in there. But these are activities that are laid out for the students uh, step by step. And obviously, this is what it'll look like when the students get in. So there'll be no markings on the map. It will just give them these instructions right here to follow. And they can toggle back and forth. They can open up the atlas. It opens up in a separate tab for them. So they can toggle back and forth between. It actually takes them there to that atlas page uh, for each one of these pieces right here. So as they're working through it, it will actually take them to that specific Atlas page. Oh, that one was the same one for that one. Um, so those are the mapping world history, or I'm sorry, mapping our world. And let's take a look at the close reading exercise here. So this one, it's usually a short reading passage, but it's short, I mean, just like four or five paragraphs. And then it has um, some instructions for students to do. And it asks, them to, it asks them here to reread the passage and based on evidence from the text, what can you infer about the different regions of North America? And so the kids read through this and they answer that, that question there. Some of them ask them to highlight the main idea. Um, each close reading exercise is gonna be a little bit different focusing on those different reading strategies. Um, if we look at the um, quick writes, you'll notice that the quick writes are laid out by activity. So we just did that hands-on activity and there's another one here for each hands-on activity, there's a writing prompt. And so right here it says, describe your community in a paragraph that includes its region, country and state in a description, whether it's an urban or rural or city or community. Um, so those are in here, check those out. There's also a whole nother collection besides the mapping our world we also have uh, mapping U.S. history, mapping world history, and even mapping the news. This is so new. I haven't even checked it out yet myself. I'm really curious. Okay, it looks like we have the coronavirus in there. 
and then um, another one here on the United States and Iran. So these are new, uh, brand new ones that are dropping in. Um, this coronavirus pandemic one, I think just dropped in uh, two days ago. So the students are gonna learn about different uh, pandemics and they're gonna understand the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic. They're gonna compare the coronavirus outbreak with the SARS and HIV outbreaks. And um, there's just a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff that they can do in there with that. Um, so I'm gonna pause for a minute and I'm gonna open it up to questions here. So you guys, if you want to unmute yourself and um, ask a question or if you wanna, all right, go ahead. Um, I was looking at your, okay, the, the, the content where it has the reading with the questions. Um, and I think you answered part of my question. Does it grade itself? And how do we get the results? How do we get access to the results? Okay, very good. So I'm going to show you guys my grade book real quick, and there's not a lot in here um, that, that has been actually done. So I'm going to click on assignments and grades on the home page. And it auto grades anything that is multiple choice or true and false. So you have to grade the short reading, you know, the short answers, the, those things. But you'll notice right here when I clicked on assignments and grades, it pulls up manage assignments first. So if you want to go in and look at what students do, you can do it that way, or you can click on grade assignment. So I'm going to click on this one here, and I'm going to grade this assignment. Notice there's a rocket ship where you can launch it, or you can grade the assignment right here. And so this is going to pull up all of the students that have turned in right here. So you can click on this, and I don't have all my students loaded in, but do you see that little green button there? That shows yes. up whenever a student turns in their assignment. And you'll notice that I got a grade right there and it's not looking so good. I only got one out of 134 possible points. So um, obviously this is a little bit longer activity here and I'm gonna show you guys how you can address that. And I didn't actually answer anything in here. I think I maybe answered like one thing, uh, just kind of scrolling down through, you can see that I've not actually made any answers. So that's why nothing is graded in there. Uh, I was hoping to find my one correct answer. It's probably all the way at the very end. Yeah, it was at the top. Yeah, so I'm going to show you guys too how to shorten these. Yeah, so right here you can see um, the only thing I asked my students to do was a quiz. That's why, but I didn't assign it just as a quiz. I assigned the whole thing, and so you can see I got all of these questions wrong, and it auto graded all of that for me. And so, but as a teacher, you can give them half credit right here. If you feel like, oh, it wasn't completely wrong, they were kind of close. So um, that's where it lives for your students. Now let me show you guys how to make this assignment and I'll show you how to shorten this because I just assigned them the entire thing. Um, I was not, I was just kind of playing around with, you know, doing a demonstration. Um, but right here, let's say I want to assign something and I'm going to do one of those power basics because those ones are pretty, pretty long here so power basics you find one that you want okay I'm going to do this one on the, the Han Dynasty and so I've gotten into this assignment and notice there are a lot of components to this well I don't want them to do the whole thing I only want them to do maybe the readings and the quiz so over here when I click on the assign button I can give the students very specific instructions read you know whatever answer quiz and so when my students log in, they'll be able to see that. And so over here, this is where you can select what to assign to the students. So right here, I'm going to assign the readings. I assigned all of those, and I'm going to assign the quiz. If you can't remember what it is that you wanted to assign, you can click on any of the words right here. So if I click on the Han Dynasty, it's gonna pull up the reading, and it is gonna have some questions here too. So the kids will need to make sure that they answer the questions that go along with that. Um, so once you do that, you select, I've given instructions up here. You can even tell your students to add highlights. Like this one is on what the Han Dynasty. So maybe um, successes of the Han Dynasty. So right here, you can add a color. 
and have him do that. And maybe we're going to do also the Kin Dynasty or Kin Dynasty. I'm not really sure. And so maybe we're going to do some comparisons here. So you can tell the students as they read up here, you can have highlight successes of Kin and Han. And so now I've got it and I'm going to assign it to my class first period. And some of you guys were asking about, like, how do we post this into Google Classroom? So pay attention really closely now. When you assign something, it's going to give you a unique link. So watch this. Save assignment. This is a link just to that assignment. You don't have to post this in Google Classroom. You can just tell kids to log into Active Classroom. But if you want to just make it simple and you want them all, this is only for when you're giving it to all of your kids. You don't want to give a modified assignment to all of your students. So this would be just like you're giving this to the whole class. So you just simply copy and paste that into Google Classroom, Schoology, Canvas, whatever. And that link will take students directly in. Of course, they'll have to use their, their clever SSO, single sign-on to get in, of course. But they should know that, that portion already. All right, so now we have it in there. Let's look at what that then looks like for from a student perspective. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna log in as that student real quick. And notice I just assigned it and it's living right here. So I'm going to click on the assignment and there are my instructions. Read, answer the quiz, and highlight successes of the Keen and Han dynasties. Okay, so I got my teacher's instructions. If, um, you know, your kids probably, like my students did, they rarely read the instructions. So I like the fact that it shows up as a separate box that they have to actively click off of and close out in order to get into the assignment. And so you'll notice right here, it's got the reading. Um, I'm just gonna highlight something just random, this right here. I'm gonna say this is good. And so I click on the little highlighter pen, and this allows me to select this, save changes. So I'm highlighting as I'm reading, you can do that. Um, there's also a text to speech button right here. Kids can click on that and they can have it read to them. Um, you can highlight something and translate it into 30 different languages. And we know that um, the Dallas ISD, you've got a lot of different languages there. I know Burmese is um, a language that pops up. We actually added Burmese just for Dallas ISD, um, but it defaults to Spanish. So right there, it'll even read to them in Spanish too. So there's that. And over here is where you change the language. So over here, you click on the gear button, click on translations, and you can see all of the different languages we have in here from Arabic, three forms of Chinese, Filipino, Hardy, Italian, Persian, which is Farsi, Swahili, uh, Thai, Turkish, Urdu, Vietnamese, and there's your Burmese right there. Um, so you can save that. It will not read in some of those languages. I'm not sure about Burmese. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it does not read Burmese, but it will read um, definitely like your Arabic languages, your romantic languages, things like that. It'll read pretty, pretty easily to your kids. But that might be for, let's say you have somebody, a kid that's at home and maybe their parents are Vietnamese and they're, um, you know, they speak and read only in Vietnamese. At least they can help their students by translating it and reading it along with them. So it's just a nice extra piece. All right, I'm going to keep going. And I do want to show you here. So as the students work through, you need to make sure that your students know that they have to click on each piece of this to complete the entire activity, but I'm just gonna randomly select here and it auto saves as you go. So it's saving my work as I'm reading. Um, we've already done that piece here. Now we're gonna go into the end of the Kin Dynasty and I'm gonna answer here. I'm just gonna do false, true. And then we go on to the Han Dynasty and we're gonna answer these here. I'm just gonna do true, true, true. Han and the law. So down here, they're answering the questions, true false or B, A, we go. I'm going to show you what it looks like for a fully graded assignment here. Okay. And so the students will just simply answer in the program. 
They'll need to make sure that they work through all of these and they answer every question in here. And it does warn them before they try to turn in the assignment. I'll show you guys what I mean here. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna leave like one or two questions unanswered. So I can show you guys that it warns your students. It tells them, hey, you haven't finished the assignment. Don't turn it in yet. And kids ignore that all the time and they still turn it in. So I'm gonna show you how you get around that. Um, so I'm gonna answer this one. I'm gonna answer this one, but I'm gonna leave eight, nine, unfinished. So it's saving my work as I go. I can check that by just going back here. I can see on that page, see it's saved. On this page, it's saved. When the student is done, then they click on turn in assignment. It says, are you sure you wanna turn the assignment? You will not be able to change or add answers to any sections you turn in. The kid's like, yeah, whatever. They always just hit the confirm button. And then it's supposed to give you a warning that it's not turned in. It usually gives two warnings. I'm not sure why it didn't give me the two warnings there, but it normally does. Um, so now my student has turned in the assignment. It time stamps it. Um, I'm, in, I'm in my California. My account is registered in California. So I'm on the uh, different timestamp than you guys. But you guys should show up with your current timestamp. Um, now I'm going to jump back to my teacher license so you guys can see what that looks like in grading it here. So you asked me about where the grades live and I pointed right here. So this is where your grading takes place. And here's that assignment that I just assigned. You can do one of two things here. Let's say you wanna check your students' annotations and highlights. I wouldn't necessarily grade those, but it's just a great way to give students feedback. Right here, you can select your students. So I'm gonna to go to my student, Jason. And I'm going to look and see what he did. And it takes me to where he finished. The last thing that he did in the assignment was right here. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, though, and take a look and see if he did any highlighting. And I can see over here on the right-hand side that he did some highlighting. And so I see this here, and he highlighted this, and I can give him feedback. Good job. What else? And when you hit that Save Changes, it gives the students a little notification that their teacher gave them some feedback. So that's a really neat way to interact students with students in real time. Um, you can do other things, like there's a discussion board, and I'll show you guys that here in a minute, but let's jump back and now grade that assignment. So I'm gonna walk you through um, grading this. So I'm just gonna go back here to this one, and I'm going to click on, instead of the launch button, which takes you in to look at the student's work, I'm gonna click on the grade button. And it takes me up here to this assignment and it allows me to filter and toggle between students and even between classes right here. So let's say you want to filter to a different class and grade a different class first, you can do that. But right here, oh look, Jason has turned in his assignment. If I hadn't turned in the assignment, that would be blank. All right, so right here, I didn't do so well. I got six out of 26. So you can give the students feedback right here and down here, you can see the student's answer. It gives you the question, the expected answer, and the student answer right here. Oh, I did get that one right, that was good. Okay, this one was half right, so I'm just gonna give me half credit right there. Notice how you can change, and my grade went up to 6.5 out of 26. You can also change that to be percentages. If you don't wanna sit there and figure out what 6.5 out of 26 is, when you assign the grade, you have to change it to percentage, and I can show you guys how to do that in just a moment. All right, I'm gonna pause again and field any other questions we might have. So who do we have questions from? If you wanna unmute yourself and ask or type it into the chat box, you can do that too. No questions? Oh, it must be really thorough. Okay, I got another question. Yes, Jenna. <laughs> um, I've used the Nystrom maps before, and I know it, it, they used to come with like um, a book with all the different questions that they have in reference to, that, that pertain to the actual um, different pages on the Atlas. Do you guys have something online that has those same questions? So yes, and um, I'm gonna direct you back here to the activities because mm -hmm. um, I kind of showed you, but I didn't really reference it, so you probably didn't catch it. Um, right here, so which Atlas have you used? 
I've used the Nystrom US history one. Okay, so if you look at the series title right here, the Atlas of US History, those are those same questions that you find in the, the workbooks. They are right here in the level one activities. Oh, okay. So if you guys are doing, uh, let me show you here. So like this one, the Civil War ends, reconstruction follows. So if I click on this, the actual questions that are being asked here are the same ones that they would find in the Atlas. But what's nice about this is it actually gives the students all the content that they need to answer those questions right here in this portion. So they have that here, and then you look at the questions down below, answer the following questions, and the kids can just respond right here and type into these boxes. Okay. So it's exactly it the same as your atlas as your atlas with your workbook pages. It's just can formatted you, can a little bit different. The, can you change the format instead of it being like a um a fill in the blank can it be a multiple choice or you just have to go with what's on there um it doesn't for these ones for this these ones here it does not give you an option to change it to multiple choice simply because okay. the the questions that i believe were in the were in that were fillable where the students were writing in answers and so they don't give the multiple choice for that one now there is though i will point you towards the level two activities so that same one, the level two activities, they do get a little more difficult as you go through, but these are mostly all multiple choice or true and false. Okay. So the level two, and this one here is drag and drop, and this will auto grade for you too. So I change to this right here and I go to the next question. These here, you're, these are drag and drop. Oh, okay, I like that. And so it'll auto grade there, those for you. And so if you want that, that's that's kind of a quicker way to do it. The Atlas level one activities are a little bit more simplified um, and they're mostly like fill in the blank and things like that. Okay, thank you. No problem. And um, just so you guys know for the other Atlases too, you do have like the Atlas of world history here for um, geography classes, you have the desk atlas. The desk atlas is only uh, level two activities, um, but those are in here. And then you also have uh, the world atlas down here at the bottom. Uh, the world atlas activities; those are always those are also level two, um, but you do have some that are a little bit more simplified. So these are all those multiple choice here, and they'll have to do these ones on the computer here. All right, um, what other questions do you guys have for me? All right, since there's no questions, what I'm gonna do is um, just highlight some things that I really want to uh, direct you towards. Actually, if you guys could all, could I get everyone right now to just type in the chat box what grade levels you work with, just so I can maybe help you guys a little bit more specifically um you know address your grade level so if you guys could just type in the chat box what grade we've got eighth grade eighth grade eleventh grade all grades juniors eleventh grade okay mostly u.s history stuff here eighth grade seventh grade so we've got some texas history representing here all right what else i think we've got I haven't gotten everybody to respond, but that's that's good for me to go with there. All right, so um, since Texas history always gets left behind, I'm gonna highlight real quick some things for Texas history. Um, so Texas history has a couple of different things, a few different um, series that are specifically written for Texas history. There's a lot of content under the US history section that can be used in Texas and that that is used in Texas and I think you guys will be happy when I show you some of those but I wanted to show you specifically just the things that we wrote for Texas history and so if you select the Texas studies you will see first off these decision making activities these are great um, you put the students in the shoes of somebody in history and they're having to make decisions as if they were that person um, those are really neat activities there 
these Texas interactive mapping activities. Um, these ones here set work similarly to some of those Atlas ones here where they answer the questions in here. They're checking, you know, checking the boxes, dragging and dropping and doing different things like that. Um, so those are the Texas interactive mapping. And then you have um, a whole series called Texas studies. And um, there are two different Lexiles. You have your on grade level for the 1000 level range right here. And so let's just take a look at what that looks like. This, this unit right here deals with geography and notice it kind of tells you the unit. So this one's all on geography. Uh, this one goes into government and economics and notice there's a test at the end of each one of those. So you have a unit test for geography. It covers all of your regions. Uh, let's take a look at what one of these activities looks like. Uh, these readings are pretty nice and straightforward. Uh, but there's also some things like if your kids are at home, you know, maybe the kids like doing stuff with their hands, doing different activities. So you have things like a study guide here, a vocabulary organizer. These are foldables. Let's take a look at what these look like. And so um, this is something that they can print off from home. It shows them how to make their vocabulary organizer. And then it gives them the template down below here where they fill in their vocabulary terms and they create that, that flip. And here's where they actually copy and paste all of those on there and then the definitions down here as well. They write those definitions in. So that's that. Um, there's also a study guide that's downloadable here that the students can, can work through. And so this one's on the coastal plains. They're gonna create a study guide and actually you're gonna use all the regions here and the kids will build their own little study guide and create a foldable uh, flip book like this. So obviously you may not be able to grade that at home but that'll give the students something to do. Maybe have them snap a picture of it um, and they can attach it to their assignment or you can have them, you know, turn it in if you guys are collecting work that's been turned in. Um, so this one has, you know, your vocabulary, your materials, and then it has your readings here. And so as the kids read, it starts off with those big ideas. You know, what are some of the big ideas? And then usually at the end of the readings, there are some activities, some questions that they answer uh, down here at the bottom. This one may not have it. That's me put my foot in my mouth there see the interactive study guide and then you've got this activity here tables and graphs so this one right here is something that they will have to fill out this graphic organizer here but you do have the test at the end so if you want to get a grade for that you can submit this or send that to them as well um, so that's texas history there's also a series of the same title texas studies but it's designed for uh, actually for fourth grade. Um, we labeled it in here as ELL, but really it's designed for fourth grade students, but it really has some good connections for ELL students as well. Um, so that's that's pretty much it for Texas history, for specific Texas history items. Uh, now, if we go on to US history, there's gonna be a lot of things I'm gonna share with you guys in here. Um, I mean, the, the, the vast majority of what's in the program if you look at actual, you know, the ratios, it's going to be U.S. history content. Um, you're probably going to find over 2,000 different U.S. history activities. Um, then, you know, you'll have world history, geography, right? and there's well over, you know, close to 5,000 different activities in active classroom as it is. So it just keeps growing. Um, but just highlighting some, obviously, the African American heroes, heroes of the Civil War. It's good if you're doing Zoom meetings with your students, you might do, you might try out one of these acting history plays. You can assign roles to your kids and say, okay, I want you guys to do this. I'm gonna meet with this group at this day. You guys are gonna act out this play all on a Zoom meeting. That might be fun to do with your students. Obviously the Atlas of US history for my world history teachers here, the Atlas of world history. These backwards planning PowerPoints are pretty massive. Um, so you want to be careful when assigning those, but you might just assign certain slides and tell the kids, hey, I want you guys to look at slides one through 20 and be ready to answer the discuss discussion questions on slide 21. Um, or you may do the C3 inquiries a little bit more involved. That's pretty high level. Um, cases and controversies. These are really good U.S. history ones. The Colonial Williamsburg have great videos. Um, you can assign just port, uh, parts of those. If you have students that really struggle with reading in U.S. history, this one right here, Conquering Close Reading, is great for uh, U.S. history readings that help students really attack difficult reading. 
um, current events. There's a ton of great stuff in here that keeps changing and growing. Um, decision making, debating the documents, those are all good for US history. Um, if you're looking for some good activities here that are at a low level, these exploring history, let me show you these ones. Um, these come with some great star practice types of maps. So right here, you've got um, a reading that's at a lower level. So this is at about a fourth grade reading level. And so it gives the students their vocabulary that they need to know. And then when they launch into it, the reading is going to be at a pretty attainable level for your students. Um, going on beyond that, it also has um, reviews. So there's a quiz that goes in here. And then there's also a map activity. You, most of these have multiple map activities. And I like the maps because these are ones that they're going to encounter on the star test. Obviously, your students won't have to take the star test this year, but they're going to see a lot of maps like this where they've got, um, you've got this little magnifying tool here, but they're black and white maps. And so you'll see a lot of these and then the shaded maps here with this one too. Um, so there's just really, there's so much content in here. You could spend, you could go down rabbit holes and find all kinds of things, but I suggest you search by TEAK. Look at what TEAK you wanna address and then specific parts of that TEAK to narrow it down. But if you really just like exploring and checking things out, then I highly recommend going through uh, searching by series just because you're gonna get to see what all Active Classroom has to offer by exploring the different series. Like these everyday life readings that pop up, these are really engaging readings. Uh, they're not like a boring textbook. It makes a lot of connections between historical things that were going on and then our life today and how they're similar and how they're different. Um, it's just kind of a unique way to, to connect with your kids. If you're looking for a textbook online, you've got Freedom, History of Us for US History, uh, tons of videos. These Framework for Democracy videos are really good. Um, History's Mysteries, if you want to do a crime scene investigation, you can assign those out to your kids. There are some for US history, some for world history, and definitely some that you can use in world cultures. Unfortunately, nothing yet for Texas history. Um, history tunes, these are cheesy songs, but the kids love them. Uh, they have the lyrics, the kids listen to the song, they read the lyrics, and then they answer the questions. The questions are really well done. They're scaffolded. So there's like tier one questions, tier two questions, and then your really high level tier three questions. And so it's scaffolded really nicely to kind of build that learning in. Uh, for geography teachers, the Hungry Planet, Material World, those are really fun and engaging. Um, you can have some good discussions in there. Key decisions in US history, those are great short activities. This issues today, this is great for a geography classroom. Um, there's our mapping activities again that I showed you guys earlier, just kind of scrolling through. I mean, there's so many good things in here. You may just want to kind of check out each one yourself and just kind of look at uh, primary source activities. These are really short. Uh, they're about 10, 15 minute little um, checks for understanding, I guess. Um, then you've got like regional geography. This is for uh, these two right here. Great for geography classes. These simulations are really cool, but again, you'd have to get all your kids on a Zoom in order to, to make that really work because it's all about simulation. Uh, short text, these are really good. There's two levels of those two, so you've got your high level and your low level. Smart songs, these are awesome for U.S. history and government. Um, there's, you know, they're, they're rap songs that these guys are really kind of goofy, and they put the lyrics in there, and the kids listen to the rap songs and then answer the questions. Storyteller's History, these are um, all by Steve Shankin, great author. I don't know if you guys have ever read him before. Very tongue in cheek, he's funny. The kids get a kick out of him. Um, he has one that's on, uh, there's three different books in here. One of them is on the Wild West, so kind of westward expansion. There's one on two miserable presidents about um, Lincoln versus uh, Davis. And then there's another one on the Revolutionary War, King George, what was his problem? Um, so those are really neat readings. Kids like those. Um, Unfinished Nation videos and Turning Point videos. Those are also some other video series that you could use. Uh, even zombie-based geography. Uh, of course, the World Atlas. The What's Going On videos, I would use those in maybe a geography classroom. There's some content you want to preview them ahead of time. You might not want to assign 
some of those to sixth grade students because some of the content's a little bit more serious. Uh, there's one that talks about like kids and and huffing a paint or glue or something like that when they're looking at like poverty and um, in certain countries. And so you may want to avoid some of those things with your younger students, but definitely topics that your older students could could grapple with. All right, I've given you guys a ton of information. And so I'm going to be offering these. I think, Heather, um, do you want to pop in here and just let everybody know when we're, we're doing another one of these next week? And um, I'd be yes, definitely that's correct. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. So next week on Wednesday from 11 to 12, we'll be back for another webinar. All right. And um, do you want me to like do some more in-depth stuff? Are we going to field questions or is it going to be more of like an introduction like this one, do you think? I think it's going to be like an introduction, field some questions, and um, especially for our uh, participants for today, if you get into Active Classroom and you're playing around with anything and you still have some more questions, please feel free to come back and ask us some more. And, um, you know, this is going to be as, on an as-needed basis, so if you guys need more, I'm definitely willing to help you guys out and do more. Um, my email, I'm going to put it here in the chat, so if you guys want to grab it, it's really, really easy. It's jason at socialstudies.com. So if you want to grab my email, I just put it in there. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'm even going to give you guys my cell phone right now. 817. 287-9244. Feel free to reach out, text me, um, or call me if you really get stuck on something. Uh, please share this, you know, share this with other teachers in your district. You know, this is really a great way, since you guys already have it, your students are already loaded for you. It's just a really nice way to, to, to reach your kids where they are right now. Um, this can be used on cell phones. Um, it can be used on uh, any type of device. Um, on a cell phone, I recommend taking it and turning the cell phone this way rather than straight up and down. You want to turn it this way. Um, just a little bit easier for the students to be able to work through it. Um, one thing I want to show you in the student view real quick, just so you guys can help your kids if they get stuck. In the student view, when you open up an assignment, especially if they're working on a smaller screen, uh, there's a way to collapse all of this on the side. So you simply click on that little dash in the middle, the little um, darker colored dash, and it collapses the sidebars. So if the kids are working on a small screen, especially on a phone, um, if they have these open, it's going to be really hard to read that content in the middle. Um, some other things I want to guide you towards, you guys were asking me about grading and stuff like that. If you click on the question mark, oops, I'm in student view. Let me change back to my teacher view. In the teacher view, there's a lot of great support resources for you here. You've got user guides, video tutorials, professional learning links. There's even a guide, a paper guide that you can print out. Your students can even print out a student guide. And then there's a bunch of short tutorials right here to answer your questions. And again, please utilize me as a resource. I'm here to support you guys. Um, I know we have live webinars. You guys should be getting emails from Active Classroom inviting you to different things. So check those out. You know, make sure you're not letting those go into your spam filter, um, especially if you're interested in learning more, because there's a lot of great stuff that we're rolling out all the time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason, for coming on and um, walking us through Active Classroom and how we can use this, especially during our remote learning initiative that we're all on and all doing right now. Really appreciate it. Not a problem. Oh, it looks like we have a question or something popped in there. Oh, no, just a thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you guys for being here today. And if there are no more questions, then I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Awesome. Sounds great, Jason. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Wait, right, another question. Oh, thank you. Awesome. All right, bye, guys. Bye. Bye.